And hello, everybody, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I do apologize. We are having sound problems this morning, but uh, hey, uh, regardless, we are glad to be here on a beautiful Easter Saturday weekend. I hope you all are having fun with your family, friends, and getting out and getting ready to to go hunt those eggs and and go to church on Sunday. Uh, We're glad to have you this morning if you're listening to us. Um, we got a big show today. Um, We're talking sports. Um, A lot of things happened last night. The Mississippi State Lady Bulldogs beat, um, who was it? They beat, uh, my mind's like, oh, Louisville. They beat them 73-63 to um, in a close game that went into overtime. Also, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the big matchup between Notre Dame and UConn. Notre Dame upset the Irish, Notre Dame upset, not the Irish, but the uh, Huskies uh, by a couple of points. And so, uh, we're going to talk about and, and review the West Jones and South Jones uh, baseball game. It was a heated classic rivalry um, in, in the area, and it was a, a good one. So if you missed it, you missed a good one. So we're going to talk about those. Also, we have a special guest on today. Uh, we have U.S. Senate hopeful and Vietnam War vet- veteran, Richard Boyington from the coast, he's going to talk with us today on what he believes. And some good things about that is in the uh, next couple of uh, weeks leading up until the election, he's going to join us each week from the campaign trail. And you're going to have the opportunity to ask him questions. And so whether that's on Facebook or that's on Twitter, you can leave me a question uh, for Mr. Boynton and he'll be glad to answer it. And so, you know, he, he's a guy that's uh, spending his own money in this campaign, just like President Trump. And so, uh, you know, if you vote that way, you might want to hear what he has to say. Um, also, a uh, big shout out to these uh, sponsors, because without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Um, those would be uh, Central Sunbelt Federal Credit Union. They have some great... Uh, loans right now that you can get take advantage of they also have an atm machine where if you get paid uh late in the day and you're a member there you can go by and you can cash or deposit your check and it appears in your account in less than an hour so that's pretty cool also tax time is winding down and so be sure to give uh, miss flick a, a call there in taylorsville she can help you with all your tax needs and uh, help you out there. Also, down there, Hattiesburg Tattoo, Brian and Stony Boy, some of the best in the business, and we're proud to have them um, with us. And uh, they just got finished with a successful um, uh, two-day event, Hattiesburg Madness, um, and it was pretty good. So um, thank you all for joining us again. This is John. Uh, Billy Ray, I'm, I don't know where he's at yet. He's asleep and Kinsley is somewhere out there. I don't know. Uh, and also thanks to, uh, Cotton Blues. Cotton Blues has some of the best cheesecakes around and you can find those cheesecakes, uh, here locally, um, over in Ellisville at the corner market. They have them, uh, the corner market in Laurel and all the Ramey's locations in Waynesboro, and over in Collins. So uh, be sure to go by and get you a good cheesecake from Cotton Blues. They sure are delicious. And they have pretty good food there if you ever want to go down there and eat something. Well, okay, let's start talking a little politics. You know, this show is uh, is just like you, you're going to a barbershop and uh, you're sitting around with your buddies, you know, our beauty shop uh, for all you females that might be listening and just talking everyday things. And, you know, sports and politics are some big things that we talk about at the uh, barbershop. And we happen to have one of those candidates running against Roger Wicker uh, for U.S. Senate. And uh, his name is Richard Boynton. He has served uh, our country proud in, in Vietnam. Also, he is a businessman. And so... He has some strong beliefs that uh, will take this country back and will help, um, you know, build it back stronger uh, because that's what we need right now. Um, And so 
we're proud to have him on. And so, uh, Mr. Richard, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, why did you want to go up against the establishment and guys like Roger Wicker? I truthfully believe that uh, Senator Roger Wicker is pretty weak. Uh, in my travels in North Mississippi, I actually find he's even weaker than I thought. When you take a look at uh, what he stood for for 10 years and what he's accomplished, it hasn't been much. And sitting in my living room, I realized that uh, no Republican in the hierarchy was going to be running against him, and I think that's not by chance. I think that uh, most of them was directed not to run against him because he is weak. All right. Um, and, you know, I think, um, you know, looking at it, I, I think when 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 you have people like you standing up against the establishment, I think it's a good thing. Um, you know, just like in the Democratic Party uh, this past election, you know, up against uh, Governor Bryant, um you know, you had a, a an unnamed truck driver. You remember that? To just yeah, I do. pop out of nowhere. Um, so yeah, I think that I think what you're saying is just what the American people are starting to realize: electing the same type of cookie cutter politicians, you're going to get the same results. We have to start going for people like in business or any other industry besides just attorneys and get somebody in there that can make a difference. Uh, I believe my opponent, Roger Wicker, is not a bad man. I just think he's inefficient, ineffective. Uh, right. And, and, and he, you know, to me, um, as, you know, as a, as a voter, when I look at somebody, I look at somebody in their record. I look at somebody that, uh, you know, doesn't side to, to with the Democrats. And he's done that, um, you know, over and over again, it seems like. But, I mean, uh, I'm more of an independent voter myself, um, just just letting you guys know. And so I go with who, whatever I think is, is the best choice. Um, it, sometimes I might be wrong. Sometimes, you know, I'm right, but you know, that's, that's what I feel. Um, and so looking at that, uh, one of the biggest issues going around the country, uh, right now is gun control. Um, what's your thoughts on gun control? Well, I believe that the second amendment gives us the right and the ability to protect ourselves in our homes and to protect ourselves from uh, of any government if we have to have it. Um, I believe in the Constitution, and I believe that we should follow the Constitution basically as it's written. And gun control, if it was the big elephant in the room, maybe we could look at it. But if you take a look, 99.99% of everybody that owns guns has never killed anybody. It's just the freaks on the other end of things that do. So uh, gun control is meaningless except for liberal socialists uh, wanting to make some kind of uh, issue out of it. But I see it as no big elephant in the room myself personally. Okay, uh, I don't either. So um, I, I don't really think there there should be an issue of that going around. I, you know, um, I, I think it's mainly fed by George Soros, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, also, uh, what do you feel about, um, education? Now, I know we talked about this a little bit the other day. Um, I have a lot of, uh, teachers in my family. I'm going to be a teacher. Uh, my fiance, um, is a sped assistant. And so teaching, you know, they said, you know, uh, I, I was talking to my fiance, you know, she's like, you know, my vote, you know, cause I asked her what she, you know, looked for and she said, well, it depends on how they view, you know, teaching. Te teaching is, is something that I look at. Well, you know, to me, the federal government being in the teaching business is uh, just not necessary. The Department of Education be, should be done away with. I think the states should make their own teachers teach, and the states run the schools, and the federal government if they're going to give money out to it, 
gives the money to them and let these states dictate who's going to be and what. I think uh, if you had 50 states that were running 50 different education systems across the country, we'd find one or two of them that had a real good system that most of us could copy some from. But having the federal dictate everything is a disaster. Absolutely. Um, I agree. Um, and tell me, uh, what are some things that you hope to bring about uh, in Washington that is gonna, going to be uh, different than your opponent, Roger Wicker? One thing is most people don't think about term limits as being something that is that important, and I see it as very important. When you take a look at term limits, we have people that are in office for a lifetime controlling all the committees that don't let anything get voted on. I I was looking at the Senate Democrats and their Senate Republicans. There's enough votes to vote for term limits. What else goes? 12 years and you have to be gone. There's enough votes there to get that, but there's not a... A committee wouldn't let it out to be voted, you know, uh, at all. So we have to get it in the committee and force them to get it out to have a, uh, a vote count for term limits. It's the one thing that can make Congress at least run half efficient. We have to get rid of these lifelong time politicians that don't let anything happen. Absolutely. And so tell me um – you know, I, I know you're a veteran. Um, I have uh, lots of friends that are veterans. Uh, a lot of my family are veterans. Uh, what are some ways that you are going to help the veterans of the country, and Mississippi specifically? I think that as a veteran coming back from Vietnam that was wounded, had malaria, and come back to a country that the VA wouldn't even take me. I had to go to a private hospital. Uh, I stayed in the waiting room for five hours and I sweated enough water to make a puddle of water. And finally my wife said, you're going to die here in the hospital and took me to a private hospital that cost me $30,000 in the next two years. And I had to go bankrupt because I couldn't pay it. So then you can't get a VA loan to get a house because you had hospital bills and stuff. It was just a chaotic situation for a 19 year old boy or man to come back home to. Uh, I think that uh, there's lots of things that need to change. One, any combat soldier coming back that is an actual combat soldier or a uh, helicopter pilot or something like that need to have a service card kept for five years so they can go into any military medical facility to get care. I uh, It sickens me to think that I was strong enough to get through mine but what about the people that were not as strong as me that committed suicide because people didn't take the time to care enough to take care of them? Absolutely. Um, you know, and you, you bring a, a great point there. Um, and, and right now it's in shambles. Um, and, and we need people like you that, to go in there to, uh, make change, good change. And so, uh, we're glad to have you on, and uh, in a few weeks, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you can go on our Facebook page, Something to Talk About Laurel Hattiesburg, and you can ask Mr. Boynton a question, something that you want to ask him, because in the next uh, weeks up until the election, he has decided to come on uh, with us and talk with us uh, from the campaign trail and give us updates each week. So. We appreciate him doing that and uh, look forward to having him on. So, uh, Mr. Boynton, I know you're itching to get back out there. So, uh, you know, thank you for taking the time uh, and talking with us. And so we'll uh, look forward to having you back uh, next week. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you then. All righty, sir. Have a good one. Thank you, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back uh, after that. <laughs> 